and Mr. Banks' uh, motion to recuse to another judge. The Young Thug Rico trial has been paused indefinitely as Judge Glanville awaits his decision from another judge on whether he should be removed from the case. And until such time as that, those two things are decided, and then we'll be in recess until that time. One lawyer who came under fire by Glanville is here with her take on this sudden change. I'm Angela Levy, and this is Crime Fix. This entire controversy started back on June 10th. That's when the attorney for rapper Young Thug, whose legal name is Jeffrey Williams, raised a concern that an ex parte meeting had been held without his knowledge regarding the testimony of the prosecution's star witness, Kenneth Lil Woody Copeland. I was told, based on information and belief, that when we arrived at 8.30, 9 o'clock today, um, he did not come into your courtroom until almost 11, 11.30. And what I found out just recently, this is not waived, is that um, supposedly in chambers, the Sonic Court, the um, Court Reporter at times, I uh, record at times, the district attorney or district attorneys for the DA's office as well as investigators, sheriff deputies, Mr. Copeland and his counsel uh, met together. None of the defense team, to my knowledge, was aware that this was going on. It was told, based on information belief, that, Ms. that it was told to the district attorneys that Mr. Copeland intended to leave the Fifth Amendment. Judge Glanville was furious that Steele found out about this meeting and held him in contempt after he refused to reveal his source. Now, how did you, how did you get that information supposedly from my chambers? Did somebody tell you? I am not. You should have told me. You got five minutes. The prosecution says nothing improper happened at this meeting and that a transcript was taken. We certainly have the right to request ex parte communications. That's why we ask that the court reporter be present. Um, this is a matter that the defendants did not have a right to be a part of, um, as this was a matter regarding a civil contempt um, that the court imposed upon a person for not obeying the court's uh, directive. And the, and the reason, reason this meeting happened in the first place was because Woody invoked his Fifth Amendment, Amendment privilege. How old are you? Grown. Um, okay, okay, what, what does grown mean? I'm an adult. adult. Okay. And we said you're an adult. adult. What, what number of years are you? I plead the fifth. What up, YouTube? Found it. Welcome to from Invited to Invited. Go on, go ahead, hit that like button. Uh, all donations upper left hand corner. Hey, listen. Hey, listen. It's all staged. This young thug YSL case is all staged. And I'm going to tell you how I know because I went to a federal trial for an entire month. And let me tell you something. They not sharp at all. If I would have knew what I knew now back then, I would have walked out of that courtroom a free man. Right? Everybody know that in federal uh, criminal cases, they got a 98% conviction rate, mainly because mostly everybody go take a plea bargain. They don't go to trial. Right? So when I'm, when I'm trying to get at state judges and state attorneys and, and uh, defense attorneys and prosecutors in the state are, are much sharper in the courtroom than the federal uh, on the federal level right because they, they they do more they do they do way more trials they much sharper right and the stuff that's going on right now this is a circuit this is this is all staged now, I don't know what about Judge Glanville. All of a sudden, he, he just flipped the script. But let me tell you something. They throw in this case. It's all staged, bro. It's all staged. You can, man, you look at the interaction. Let me just look at this interaction right here. Check it out. I'm a court reporter at times. I'm a court at times. District attorney or district attorneys for the DA's office as well as investigators, sheriff deputies, Mr. Copeland and his counsel. Uh, met together. None of the defense team, to my knowledge, was aware that this was going on. It was told, based upon information belief, that, Mr. that it was told to 
the district attorneys that Mr. Copeland intended to plead the Fifth Amendment. Judge Glanville was furious that Steele found out about this meeting and held him in contempt after he refused to reveal his source. Now, how did you, how did you get that information supposedly from my chambers? Did somebody tell you? I'm not, you should have told me. You got five minutes. The prosecution's- You know, he's standing up and, you know, he didn't, he didn't have a lawyer in the contempt, gave a lawyer 10 days in prison for five weekends straight. He got to do Saturday and Sunday for five weekends straight. This is all stage, bro. This is all stage. He want to know how he found out about the secret meeting, right? He want to know how he found out about the secret meeting. And the secret meeting was with, was with Lil Woody. I'm going to play the documents from the secret meeting because they got transcripts for it. I'm going to play it, right? And the secret meeting, you gonna, you gonna after you listen to this, y'all would all agree with me that Lil Woody is a genius. He should run after this. I don't care if he snitched or whatever he did before the end, but he's making a mockery of the trial. He just freed everybody else. And let me tell you something else, right? Let me tell you something else. He should be the leader of the whole crew. He's diabolical. He's a diabolical madman genius. That's what he is. That's what he is. Y'all check this out. Now we have that transcript. The ex parte meeting in Judge Glanville's chambers took place earlier in the morning on June 10th, and it began with Prosecutor Adrian Love bringing up a Georgia statute that outlines witnesses being given immunity and what that means for them. It's called 24-5-507, and I'll get to more on what it says in just a moment. Adrian Love then brought up that she was concerned that Kenneth Copeland's attorney, Jonathan Melnick, may not be explaining everything to him regarding his testimony and his obligation to testify as outlined in that statute that I mentioned earlier. Love said Mr. Melnick relayed to Ms. Hilton last Friday that he had never heard of statute 24-5-507. Love said the Friday before she received an email that had been sent by Melnick to Brian Steele and Max Shart, in which he said, quote, this is the communication I received from Miss Love regarding Mr. Copeland. She didn't know if she had been included on this email by mistake. Love said she responded, quote, whose interest are you protecting? Yours or Mr. Steele's? Whose clients? Which clients are you protecting? Whose client, yours or Mr. Steele's or Mr. Shart's? Love said Melnick wrote back, you are going to get him killed. He means Lil Woody. You made him, you are making him, you made him a target. F you. Love said that it appeared to her that Melnick wasn't really concerned that little Woody might incriminate himself or that he was not being properly protected by immunity. Love then said, quote, Mr. Melnick, if the interest he is protecting is Mr. Copeland's freedom, he did not convey it by asking us what exposure does he face in testifying. In fact, if he's concerned that testifying will get Mr. Copeland killed and he is not communicating with us, he's communicating with counsel for the defendants, it would seem that he knows a thing or something we don't know. Wow. So it seems like Adrian Love is saying that little Woody is supposed to be a state's witness with immunity testifying for the prosecution. So that would make him adverse to Young Thug, Jeffrey Williams, and Shannon Stilwell. Maxwell Shart is Stilwell's lawyer. But Love makes it sound as if Melnick is working with Shart and Steele instead of representing the interests of his client, Little Woody. Now, Little Woody was granted immunity. So back to that statute I mentioned earlier, it's 24-5-507. It outlines a witness being given immunity. It states, no testimony or other evidence required under the order or any information directly or indirectly derived from such testimony or evidence shall be used against the person in any proceeding or prosecution for a crime or offense concerning which he or she testified or produced evidence under court order. The statute does say, however, that a person could be prosecuted for perjury if they lie, or they could be held in contempt if they fail to testify. And remember when it was stated that Lil Woody could be held in indefinitely if he didn't testify? The statute says, if a person refuses to testify after being granted immunity from prosecution and after being ordered to testify as set forth in this code section, such person may be adjudged in contempt 
and committed to the county jail until such time as such person purges himself or herself of the contempt by testifying as ordered. So it's right there in the Georgia statute. Adrian Love also claimed that Jonathan Melnick, little Woody's attorney, stated that he would not be representing Woody anymore if he testified. Judge Glanville, after receiving questions from little Woody's standing counsel, Kayla Bumpus, about the statute and how long Woody could be held, said, quote, you know, the whole thing is that he can, he has the keys to his own freedom. And the freedom is if he just gives his testimony, then he's purged it. Kayla Bumpus then responded, right. Adrian Love then said, and you know, whatever that testimony is, we know what we believe it to be, but you know, we don't know what it is. We can't talk about it. We don't, you know, we don't know what he's going to say. We have an idea. We know what he told us. Then little Woody was brought into this meeting. Little Woody said at one point, I want to speak to you personally that I have never been truthful a day in my life until I just made this statement right now. He also said, I don't comprehend none of this stuff that's going on. I got family members watching this trial and I don't want my nephew and them to hear the things that I may be involved in and think it's okay. He later said, I don't trust, I don't know what's going on, I don't trust nobody. The conversation continued between Assistant DA Hilton and Copeland. Hilton saying, but what did I tell you? When we met with each other, I said to you, you asked me, what is the one thing that's going to get me in jail? Didn't you ask me that? And what was my response? I said, if you plead the fifth, and that is exactly what you did on the stand. Copeland responded, but what did I tell you before I got to that point? I told you the whole time, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Then Hilton said, but I told you you were being given immunity. Copeland said that I was pleading the fifth. So he's saying he told her he was going to do this. Hilton responded, no, you did not. Hilton then continued, and we said we could give you immunity. You said your concern is what they know about you. And when you said that, I said, well, you know stuff about them. And then I said, whatever your concerns are, we can give you immunity. Copeland responded, so I didn't tell you I lied on them to get myself out of the situation? Hilton said, you said you were a liar. That's what you said. You said you were a liar. <laughs> so listen. The secret, the secret meeting covered everything. You see that the prosecutor gave some civil case law, civil now, on why she had to, why she was allowed to have a secret meeting without the def, uh, defense counsel, right? She covered herself, right? Now check this out. Now, now let's go back to Lil Woody, right? Lil Woody had a, a previous meeting where they, you know, he's supposed to take the stand. And they told him he can't plead the fifth. Right? So you see the language right there. What do he do? The, uh, when, the, when the prosecutor asked him how old he was, he said grown. Then she re-asked him again. He said, I plead the fifth. He knew exactly what he was doing. But not only that, check this out right here. Y'all remember this part in that? Check this, check this out right here. Situation. Hilton said, you said you were a liar. That's what you said. You said you were a liar. <laughs> Bruh! He got the... He, he worked them, bro. Now in the secret meeting, the language of lied or liar is in the secret meeting and they go back to a previous meeting. You got to get the man his immunity still. He making a mockery of the court and you got to let him go. Because for the simple fact, you heard the prosecutor say, you didn't say you lied, you said you were a liar. Why would you put a liar on the stand? Oh my God, this is so genius. This is so genius, bro. This is truly amazing. Here it is right here. I circle it for y'all. Here it is. <laughs> Lil Woody, the baddest motherfucker around here, boy. Man, this a bad man, bro. Hey, 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 hey. So, I, don't, I know, I know it. He shouldn't be in that situation. He ain't supposed to be on the stand and all that. But he, man, this dude is shrewd and he working it. He working it. Oh my God, bro. Oh my God. This is genius. This, I saw, I've been watching. I was like, man, this ain't no way this is possible. 
all the stuff that was going on in this courtroom. I'm like, this got to be like staged. So I'm like, man, they bought the case. And what I mean by bought it, they may walk out of that courtroom not guilty, or they will be sent home on appeal, like in a short, you know, in a short time. They might get them get a good conviction and free everybody after that, because this trial is just a mockery, and it's just the trial is just a disaster. So the whole thing is like, you know what I mean? And let me say this: I got some friends in Atlanta, right? And one thing I will say: they say Atlanta is so messed up. Atlanta is not safe. So you got some of the people down there uh, trying to, you know, trying to trying to get some of these dudes and stuff. All these dudes in power. And they're not doing it the right way. They just, you know, they're trying to get some people. They're trying to put the blame on certain people who got power. Atlanta is a mess right now. You can't pump gas. You got a charger. They definitely coming for it. It's just, it's like you got a Dodge Charger. They, it's like they coming for it. Atlanta is a whole mess. It's just a mess, bro. You know what I mean? So I get it. I get it. But man, let me tell you, man, this whole thing is, it's all, it's all stage. And Lil Woody is a genius. This is from Indicted to Invited.